Hey guys! Good morning! Welcome back to our channel, The Eaton Squad. So on today's video is a travel advisory from the Bureau of Immigration for arrival and departure travel restrictions. Details coming right up. So the Bureau of Immigration has just posted the most updated travel advisory for arrival and departure travel restrictions. So we are going to tackle the arrival travel restrictions first on who can enter the Philippines, on what are the additional requirements for a particular category, and who should present an entry exemption document issued by the Philippine Post abroad. So let's go over the details of this travel advisory. So who can enter the Philippines this month, March 2021? Number one, of course, are Filipinos. Number two, Balik Bayans. Balik Bayans are former Filipinos that has naturalized abroad but did not apply for a dual citizenship. They are called Balik Bayans. This type of passenger can avail the Balik Bayan privileges or the one-year visa-free in the Philippines. Number three, those with valid and existing visas at the time of entry and who were not permitted to enter the country under previous IATF resolutions. These are the visa holders of 9A visa and SRRV visa. But please take note of the keyword in there, those with valid and existing visa upon entry. So your visa should be good upon entry into the Philippines. Aside from that, you have additional requirements along with your visa. So this is the entry exemption document issued by the Philippine Post abroad. So who should present this document? Number one is holders of valid and existing Section 9 visas under CA-613. This is also known as the Temporary Visitor's Visa. Number two, holders of valid and existing Special Resident and Retirees Visa or SRRV. If you guys want to know the details of this type of visa, I have already uploaded a video on that if you want to know more. If you guys belong to this category of visa holders, we have the details in our travel update video. Also, the following are allowed entry under the Balikbayan Privileges or RA6768. Only nationals from non-visa required countries under Executive Order 408. So if you guys want to know what are these countries that non-visa required under Executive Order 408, we have also uploaded a video on that on our travel updates. Please check it out if you want to know more the details on it. But these are the following that are allowed entry under the Balikbayan program. Number one, Filipino citizens, foreign spouses, and children, regardless of age, who are traveling with the Filipino principal. Please take note that there is a condition on how to avail the Balikbayan privileges that you need to travel with the Filipino principal. And if you guys are not traveling with the Filipino principal, but still you are married to a Filipino, you are still allowed entry into the Philippines, but you have to avail visa this time and the Filipino wife or the spouse should be residing or in the Philippines already. Number two are former Filipino citizens together with their foreign spouses and children regardless of age who are traveling with them. So like I mentioned earlier, former Filipinos, these are Filipinos who naturalized abroad but did not apply for dual citizenship. You guys are still allowed to enter the Philippines and can avail the Likbayan privileges along with your spouse and children as long as they are traveling with you. 
So those with valid and existing visas at the time of entry and who were not permitted to enter the country under previous IATF resolution except those required entry exemption document from the Philippine Post Abroad. Our next one, except for the following, provided that the principal Philippine national is in the country, meaning the spouse or the wife is already in the Philippines and the husband or the wife, whoever is the foreign national, wants to visit his family in the Philippines, you are eligible to secure a 9A visa in any of the Philippine consulates abroad to where your jurisdiction is. So number one, foreign spouses of Filipino nationals. Number two, foreign minor children and foreign children with special needs regardless of age of a Filipino national. Number three, foreign parents of minor Filipino children and of Filipino children with special needs regardless of age. So these categories that I mentioned are eligible to secure a 9A visa to a Philippine consulate abroad where your jurisdiction is. So now let's go over to the additional requirements for arriving immigrant and non-immigrant visa holders issued by the Bureau of Immigration. These are the following. Number one, valid re-entry permit for immigrants. Number two, valid special return certificates for non-immigrants. And number three, pre-booked accommodation for at least six nights in an accredited quarantine hotel or facility except for Section 9E visa holders. So please take note of these additional requirements for arriving immigrants and non-immigrant visa holders issued by the Bureau of Immigration. If you want to know more the details of the re-entry permits and the special return certificate, we have also uploaded a video on that on the details from the Bureau of Immigration. So please check out our travel update videos. Those who fail to present a pre-booked accommodation shall be denied entry and shall be boarded immediately on the next available flight. So please take note that they are very serious and strict to have a pre-booked accommodation ready, that you have the hotel confirmation already, that you have booked at least six nights in an accredited hotel or facility for quarantine while you are waiting to be swabbed on the sixth day. Most airlines now are checking hotel accommodations during check-in so make sure that you have done that at least one week before your flight to the philippines so you won't be denied entry into the philippines so those are the arrival travel restrictions going to the philippines now let's go over to the departure travel restrictions for outbound passengers from the philippines going abroad additional requirements for outbound filipinos number one for those traveling on tourist or short-term or visitor's visa, submission of confirmed round-trip tickets and adequate travel and health insurance to cover travel disruptions and hospitalization in case of COVID-19 infections during their allowable period of stay abroad. So these type of passengers are on tourist visa holders you are required to show a round trip ticket you are also required to have travel and health insurance when you go abroad and also make sure the travel and health insurance is adequate to cover you just in case you get infected with covid19 while abroad number two execution of a bureau of immigration declaration acknowledging the risk involved in traveling including risk of delays in their return trip to be provided at the check-in counters by the airlines this is the document that you need to fill out that you are aware of the risk while traveling because there will be times that your flight going back to the philippines will be canceled or will be rerouted or will be scheduled so you have to be prepared or you have to be aware of that 
by signing the Bureau of Immigration Declaration. So you have to do that on the check-in counter by the airlines. And number three, whenever required by the country of destination or the airline, a negative COVID-19 test taken in accordance with the health and safety protocols of such destination country and airlines. So for example of this is the United States of America. If you are a tourist and wants to visit the states, you are required to show a negative swab test result taken within three days before you are allowed to board on the plane. So that's one. So if you guys are going abroad to a particular country, make sure that you check the travel restriction of that particular country or even the airline if they require a negative swab test result before you can board the plane. So that's really important to those outbound passengers who want to go abroad from the Philippines. Upon return, they shall follow the guidelines of the National Task Force or NTF for returning overseas Filipinos. So you were required a round trip ticket, you were required a travel and health insurance, you are required to sign a Bureau of Immigration Declaration acknowledging the risk, and you need to provide the required negative swab test result if the destination you are going to is requiring it or the airline is requiring it. When you return to the Philippines, you have to go through the arrival protocol again. Right now, the updated arrival protocols in the Philippines is you have to book at least six nights in an accredited hotel for quarantine because the swab testing is not upon arrival anymore. You will do your swab testing on the sixth day after you arrive in the Philippines. So whatever the arrival protocols in the Philippines is, you will have to go through that when you return. The health and travel insurance doesn't apply to those green card holders or permanent residents or citizens of the country you are going to, like the United States. If you are a permanent resident or you are a green card holder or you are a citizen of the United States, the travel and health insurance doesn't apply to you. But the negative swab test result is required to all passengers coming to the U.S. Thank you so much guys for watching. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family whom you know that can use this video as reference. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We do travel updates and if you are not a subscriber yet, Please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you will be notified on updates like this. And to our subscribers and new subscribers, thank you, thank you so much for the continued support and trust to our channel, The Aten Squad. I hope to see you guys on our next travel update. Stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless everyone. Bye!